Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to GFD Traders Espresso with me, Dario Sonny Charles, because today is the 28th of April 2020. So yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Tuesday's morning uh, recorded session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. <clears throat> but before we do that, uh, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so now then, uh, just before we uh, jump in into the charts, uh, as always, quick mentioning of our GFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course, our GFD Bank website and specifically our GFD research page, which we also update on a daily basis. So yeah, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top. So uh, now then, um, this is the updated figure. Let me just actually refresh it once again, but I think that's going to be the updated figure. So we've climbed above the um, 3 million uh, barrier. Um, so, yep, the number of infections has increased. Um, U.S. is leading the way in that field. Um, if it was Italy previously, now it's the U.S. I mean, the U.S. has m more than double uh, of, what it, of Italy's deaths, so... So yeah, uh, for now that's the situation. So let's continue observing this one and uh, let's see. Uh, Europe, it seems to be uh, kind of easing off a little bit, somewhat I would say, um, especially Eastern Europe, um, but the Western Europe is uh, still on the higher side. So, well, we'll continue, like I said, we'll continue monitoring all this. Uh, now then, uh, jumping into a few charts, uh, so the uh, the German DAX here, uh, looking at this picture, uh, you can see that the mm, uh, the index is still stuck between these two levels. So again, uh, not much has changed since yesterday, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I keep talking about this one for already for a week. And uh, the index continues to kind of balance in between these two levels. Now, um, it's n uh, what we need here is uh, a, a push-up of the 10,000. Uh, 820 zone which is the current highest point of April so we do have three days left in April is it three days let me just uh, yeah I think it's one two three yep there we go so three days uh, left in to trade in April uh, including today so yep um, keep your eyes on this I mean let's see if the index can form a new high for April however for now it's stuck here in this little range uh, roughly between the 10,820 and the uh, 10,280 zone so but in order to let's say aim for lower levels we need to see a nice good drop below that psychological 10,000 zone and then we could consider or further decline so for now that's the situation uh, it hasn't changed much from my previous videos uh, so yep let's continue observing these two levels uh, FTSE 100 now FTSE 100 is pushing higher or at least trying to push higher um, looking at the cash index where and where it is trading right now we can see that the uh, price is balancing around the 5850 territory so basically it's just bang on where it ended yesterday so Still the same kind of game plan remains. We need to see a clear push above this uh, 5,895 territory before we could consider higher areas for now. Uh, it is where it is. And uh, yes, on one hand, somebody might say that, look, I mean, it's forming a potential ascending triangle. However, uh, let's not rush 
into this for now. Let's say, yes, we need to see that confirmation break above this 5,895 territory, and then we could get a little bit more comfortable with higher areas. Uh, in terms of the downside, we will wait for a drop below the 5,500 level because that's the lowest point of 2016. So uh, basically a good but possible area to consider uh, after a break of which the the index could drift lower but for now uh, again it is trying it seems that it's trying to make its way higher however uh let's we need we need that confirmation break above the 5895 territory so keep your eyes on this one uh, now then gold uh this is where it's in becoming interesting so yesterday i talked about this one and i was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this 170304 zone uh which i was saying that if it fails to provide support uh or should i say if it provides support then we could see a nice rebound and a push higher so yesterday the uh the commodity closed above it so it didn't even reach it didn't even reach that area but this morning we're seeing a nice slide here to the downside so in a way first of all let's get rid of this arrow no longer needed because the 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 precious metal is drifting to the downside however as i've mentioned previously to you that in order to get comfortable with the deeper extensions to the downside we would like to see a, a nice good drop below this 1680 territory and pref preferably uh, a, cl a daily close below it so this way um the the index oh, sorry the, index, the commodity would also be placed below its 21 ema here on the um this 21 ema on the daily chart so this is shown as the yellow line here um and then yep further declines could be possible so in other words as well uh something to keep in mind is of course this double potential double top uh pattern now in order to get this confirmed as i said we need to see a break of this uh, so-called neckline here so near the 1680 so for now the uh, the, the precious metal is drifting in that direction. Uh, let's see how it performs around here, but for now it's all looking uh, a bit gloomy here for the um, for for the buyers because again we are kind of uh, drifting a little bit lower here and uh, again it, it will be quite interesting to see if this can get confirmed as a double top uh, as a double top pattern where we could see a break of the neckline here near the 1680 zone so but again for now uh, we're very careful because this is not confirmed yet because uh, we all this territory right here is somewhat of a neutral one for us So we're not doing anything. We're just observing um, In case this suddenly climbs back and above the 170304 zone um, and stays here for for the day uh, Then well, I mean maybe the whole uh, double top uh, idea is off the table and we could see this one pushing maybe back up again here especially if it climbs back above the 1723 territory which is the the high of the uh, 12th of December 2012 and then yep we could see maybe higher levels but for again for now yes it is drifting lower we are keeping a close eye on this 1680 zone uh, we'll see how it performs around there but uh, yep we'll be very careful first uh, first of all we want to see how uh, this this daily candle and where this daily candle will end rent oil now rent oil uh, I talked about this one yesterday and uh, I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this level the low of the um the low of the f uh, of Thursday of last Thursday uh which is was which was around 20.10 zone and uh, you can see that the uh the commodity closed even fractionally below that psychological 20 zone so all this kind of creates this bearish atmosphere uh for oil and i mean uh, we are getting closer to the end of the month or we are well actually we are at the end of the month so we only have three days left so this will be very interesting to see how uh the april candle and where the april candle will close because all this is kind of still looking quite bearish here and uh well um, it's not looking good here for oil. So for now, uh, guys, be very careful. Like I said, we have three days left of trading uh, for and for this month. So, um, well, let's see how this is going to play out for now. Like I said, everything's still looking a little bit more uh, to the downside. Um, however, if by any chance this 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 commodity drifts back above the this barrier here, the 21, uh, 21.64 level, which is the lowest point of March 
then there could be a bit more buyers to join in here and we could see this one drifting higher however for now that's not the case for now it's leaning more towards the downside ethereum so ethereum is in a bit of a decline yesterday it kind of closed slightly fractionally in the red um, it is drifting a little bit lower but uh, as you can see this area here which previously was seen as a good area of resistance and the one that I was talking about a couple of days ago the, the 189 uh, level uh, acted as a good area of resistance I talked about this one on Friday uh, on Thursday uh, where I was, I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this barrier which got broken as you can see it opened the path towards higher levels it, it we ended up testing that psychological 200 zone so uh, everything is according to plan what I was uh, mentioning um, and now the crypto is drifting a little bit lower um, so uh, now the the of course the focus will be on this um, on this and this hurdle on this 189 zone. If it provides support, then we could see a nice rebound and a push higher. However, if it starts breaking, then yes, I mean there is a potential for this one to move lower. Um, however, we still have the bulls can still kind of save themselves near this short-term upside support line taken from the low of the 13th of March, and in a way the the crypto could rebound from here and push higher. However, if it starts drifting lower and pushes build back below the this little hurdle, uh, let me just quickly put this one on the chart. Uh, this little hurdle at 176.50, then yes, uh, then yes, we could see this one drifting a little bit a little bit more to the south um, because this would also place the the price below all of its EMAs here on the daily chart so the 200 the 100 and the 21 and the up more sellers could see this is a good opportunity to step in so that's why be very careful for now um, yes it is drifting lower but first of all all eyes are on this 189 level let's see if it provides support as it did yesterday for example if it doesn't then the last kind of point for the bulls to step in could be around this upside support line uh, but if that breaks and the in the price falls below the 176.5 zone then well deeper extensions to the downside could be possible guys so be very careful and, and uh, yeah be very cautious AUD oh sorry USD JPY now quick update on this one not much has changed since uh, since yesterday uh, basically the same rules apply we're still waiting for a, a clear breakthrough one of the highlighted areas uh, yesterday the the pair came close to uh, hitting the 106.92 zone which is the which is currently the lowest point of April uh, but as you can see it failed to do so and uh, maybe it could have an, a second attempt today so uh, because it's closer to this area right now and uh, well first of all of course let's see if it can make a new low for uh, for April for now as I said it's 106.92 zone that's that's why for now we're gonna wait uh, again it's there's a lot of waiting here guys for now I mean it's it's it this is how it is I mean let's not rush into something and uh, let's wait for for a confirmation break because as I said uh, there's a lot of kind of waiting games that we're playing here especially with the indices as well so um, and USD JPY is kind of uh, well uh, is joining that club as well so that's why for now like I said just wait guys uh, if it pushes above the 108.08 level then yes more buyers could join in here and potentially push this one to the upside so um, jumping into NZD cat quick update here so yesterday I talked about this one and I was telling you guys that um, in a way keep your eyes on this barrier here the the uh, the kind of the high of the 31st of March which is around the 0 0.8556 um, as you can see the pair the pair failed to move even above its 200 EMA here on the daily chart. So the two, this 200 EMA acted as a very good area of resistance, uh, from which, as you can see, the um, the pair sold off and drifted lower. So. Um, this morning it continues to move uh, to the downside um, well I mean for now we will be very careful here and uh, of course we'll keep an eye on this little short-term upside support line now it's a bit of a tentative don't get me wrong because you can you can start drawing some other ones here or you know like somewhere like there from even if you want you can start drawing it from here and connect these two points so whatever it's whatever you feel comfortable more with um, you can keep this one in just in case but um, yeah all of them are tentative and uh, to be honest but 
and what we're going to do here mainly is going to focus on some of the support levels. Now, uh, one support level that we're going to be keeping a close eye on will be this one, the 0 0.838081 zone, roughly around there. Uh, and that's the uh, the low of the 16th of April. And uh, if, we, if we see a drop below this, then yes, uh, maybe lower levels could be met. This is when we will consider a possible move uh, here to the downside towards the current lowest point of um, current lowest uh, not this one uh, uh, okay this is a little bit in the in in the way so the current lowest point of um, of April um, which is around 0 0.8268 zone so uh, yep for now guys uh, like I said be very careful. Keep your eyes on some of these levels, and uh, even with the upside, if it if it reverses, if it let's say for example rebounds from this upside support line and pushes higher, still with the upside, it's a little bit tricky because we do have this downside resistance line taken from the high of the twenty uh, of uh, the, taken from the highest point of March two thousand and nineteen. So. Again, we are at a very interesting spot here, but if we get a break of this upside support line and a drop below the 0 0.8381, then yep, more uh, more sellers could see this is a good opportunity to step in. A uh, quick update on AUD and ZD. I talked about this one yesterday. We're breaking this downside line, and uh, most importantly, that we've managed to uh, break and stay and close the daily candle above this uh, downside line and above this other level that I talked about, the uh, 0 0.8381. Uh, 64 uh, 45 area and uh, as you can see yep uh, now the rate continues to balance slightly above it so in a way everything's kind of leaning more towards the upside uh, we will continue targeting uh, higher levels for now uh, but of course we'll take everything with a pinch of salt and in case this um, in case this reverses and pushes back uh, back below this below this downside line then well I mean uh, lower levels could be met uh, because if it especially if it drops back below this low here the low of the 21st of April which is around the 0 0.6254 mark and uh, then because all this territory here could be a little bit of a neutral one because the in, in a way what we could see here is if let's say this for somehow drops lower uh, moves below this downside line uh, more sellers could start joining in here but then it gets a hold up uh, like it did here in, uh, on the 21st of April it gets a hold up near the 21 EM EMA here on the daily chart and then reverses and pushes higher so basically a lot of people could get stopped out so that's why we would prefer to see maybe a drop below this uh, below this little area right here first uh, not this one but right this one right here and uh, then consider kind of deeper extensions to the downside for now uh, yeah we will will remain more bullish than bearish um, and especially if um, especially if uh, if it continues to balance above, above this 0 0.6455 0 .6445 territory. So keep your eyes on this one. If it climbs higher above this 100 EMA here on the daily chart, the next target to consider is around the, um, the 0 0.6677 mark, which is marked near the lows of, or should I say near the lowest point of August, near the lowest point of October, near the lowest point of September as well, um, and uh, near the high of the uh, or should I say near the highest point of March so very good strong area to consider so let's keep an eye on this one uh, AUD and ZD so this one keeps on popping and this is what I talked about yesterday basically uh, what I was saying that uh, initially uh, well yesterday I was a little bit more on the cautious side uh, given the steep kind of uprise we had already so um, yeah the the pair climbed not only to this level here the 1.0666 zone but it also overcame the this other target that I, we that we had the 1.0781 uh, 1.0708 zone uh, which was the low of the 4th of November and now you can see that the pair seems to be willing to push further north now a little obstacle to keep in mind is around here somewhere that's the low of the 12th of November of last Two years so as you can see it almost managed to reach that kind of got a hill kind of got a hold up uh, slightly below it and now the big question here is can it continue drifting higher but if it fails to do so well I mean if it fails to do so and uh, it starts uh, moving back down again we will aim for lower levels if we get a drop 
uh, back below this level right here, the 1.0708. Um, if we get a move back below this, then yes, uh, we will aim for a bit of a larger correction to uh, towards this um, short-term upside support line taken from the low of the 18th of March. So again, uh, all eyes are on this right now. If if this gets broken, if this barrier, the 1.0757, which is the low of the uh, 12th of November gets broken, then, well, you could consider the next potential target of resistance could, uh, around the 1.0865, and that's the high of the 7th of November, and, uh, uh, yep, if it gets a break here, the 1.0757, uh, if, if that one gets broken, then it could, in a way, open the door towards that level, towards the highest point of November 2019. However, uh, don't get me wrong, we are a little bit overextended here to the upside, so maybe a bit of correction could be possible. So let's see how it plays out near this level first, near the 1.0757, and then how it uh, will it drop back below the 1.0708. If it drop, if it does that, then we could consider a bit of a decline here to the downside. Oh, well, a bit of a decline here, not to, <laughs> so yeah, keep your eyes on that one, guys. Uh, GBP, JPY, so uh, still the same game plan remains. I'm not going to spend too much time on this one because we are still carefully monitoring this little area, this little area of support, um, and uh, basically this area of support near the 132.42 zone uh, a drop below this could open the door towards lower levels and uh, well uh, deeper extensions to the downside could be possible so uh, that's why guys for now be very careful here um, let's see if this can uh, move lower if we get a drop below this then yes uh, we will aim for the downside but uh, for now it we are still a little bit more on the bearish side because uh, uh, well, I mean, USDJPY uh, seems to be willing to go move lower. However, also confirmation drop is required, and GBPJPY is also, uh, well, in this case, it is it is balancing below all of its EMAs, even the 21-day EMA still. So it cannot, uh, for the past few trading days, it cannot overcome this, this line. So that's why we're leaning a little bit more to the downside on this one um however a confirmation break below the 132 zone is 132.44 zone is required so keep your eyes on that one and finally euro usd um so yesterday the uh the pair kind of ended the trading session still below this downside line taken from the high of the 30th of March and uh, and this is what I was talking about guys basically we need to see um, an exit here and, uh, and until it's trading inside uh, this little kind of triangle this descending triangle we will still we will remain neutral because even for the upside let's say we need to see first of all a break of this of this downside line of the upper side of the triangle and a push up of the 200 EMA here on the four hour chart and on the downside we need to see a drop a good uh, cl daily close below the um, below this lowest point of February uh, which is around the 1.0777 only then we will get comfortable with further decline so for now we're just waiting so guys I hope you found it useful and uh, thank you very much for watching and listening and I really appreciate your time so if you want to capture my video a little bit later my traders tea time uh, 14 uh, sorry 14 13 15 GMT time so uh, yep and then we'll take it from there we'll I'll have a look at some of these instruments some new ones and uh, we'll see how what to expect from the mm, some of those instruments so have a wonderful trading day guys stay safe both um, health wise and uh, market wise um, and uh, yep I'll see you later thank you very much and bye bye